So these notes are about 3D graphing. So you'll notice I have uh, what's known as isometric dot paper here, and you can download some as well. And what isometric dot paper is good for is viewing things that we normally see in two dimensions, viewing them um, on a two-dimensional surface, but viewing 3D things. So here's what I mean. If you imagine joining some of these dots together like that, you can see that it makes a cube, and I'm actually sort of viewing that cube from the top. And you might remember, you know, from art class, you drew, you'd learn how to draw a cube with pers perspective. On this type of paper, it makes it really easy to draw pictures like this. Notice I could also draw a cube looking up from the bottom on this paper, just by using these dots and connecting them. So you can see, you can start to see 3D things. You can almost maybe imagine some blocks put together, if you're into like Legos or something that, something like that. This almost looks like a tet some sort of Tetris piece, but paper like this makes it really easy to draw three-dimensional things. So it almost like gives you that perspective um, right away. It gives you like the nice sort of cube feel right away. So we're going to use this paper to talk about how we would graph things on a three-dimensional axis. So I'm going to erase these. And we're used to, in two dimensions, graphing um, things on an x-y plane. And that's only two dimensions. You have an x-axis and a y-axis. Um, 3D, we're actually going to have an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis. And here's how we would sketch those axes. There's one of them. Here's another. And here's another. So you can kind of imagine um, how this looks in three dimensions. One axis is going straight up and down. I'm going to call that the Z axis. And the other two axes, you can imagine, are the XY's a XY axes, but just sort of laid down flat. So um, this one right here, this is like the positive X axis. It's almost like coming at you in a way. And this is sort of going back behind. This one's also going back behind, and this one's almost kind of coming at you. It takes a while getting used to it that this really is trying to represent three dimensions. Um, different, you know, textbooks or journals, whatever, will name the axes differently. It is three dimensions, so you can rotate it, so it really doesn't matter which axis is which. Um, but just to keep things consistent, I'm going to call this axis the x-axis, and that one the y-axis. Um, just make sure that you're always labeling your axes so you know what's what. So normally, if I wanted to plot a point, um, I would plot uh, x comma y, sort of on what we're used to. But now that we have three axes, a point is of the form x comma y comma z. And let's say we wanted to plot the point uh, 1, negative 2, 3. Well, the 1 is telling us how much to go in the x direction. The negative 2 is telling us how much to go in the y direction. And the 3 is telling us how much to go in the z direction. So those numbers match up with where they correspond in the uh, general point. Now we just have to remember what's sort of our positive direction and what's our negative direction for each axis. And by convention, the one that's coming towards you is sort of the more positive one. So there's a positive x, here's positive y, and up at the top is positive z. And then the other ones are the negative. So here's negative y, here's the negative x-axis, and here's the negative z-axis. Again, it doesn't matter where you orient these things as long as you're labeling. Um, because in three dimensions we can sort of move stuff around um, freely. So let's plot the point 1, negative 2, 3. So I'm going to go 1 in the positive x direction which is like that. So I'm right, um, sort of tracing my path. I'm on the x-axis. I started from the origin, which is 0, 0, 0 now, and I went 1 in the positive x direction. And I want to go negative 2 for a y-coordinate, so that's 2 in the negative y direction. So negative y would be sort of backwards 2 units, 1, 2. So that's backwards two units. And you might be able to sort of visualize how this is really in three dimensions. Um, we're sort of creating almost a plane right now um, on our way to 
uh, on our path, essentially. Now I want to go three in the positive z direction, so that would be up, one, two, three, and the point that I landed on was right here. Notice, if I just put a dot at that point without tracing my path, I could have also gotten there by going back three in the y, negative three in the y direction and up two in the z direction. So that's why it's really important to trace our path from the origin. And you might even see sometimes we put little arrows on our path to show that that's how we got there. So in three dimensions, remember, I'm representing this on something two-dimensional, this flat surface. So it's really important to show exactly how we got to that point. So that is the point one, negative two, three. That's where we landed. Um, if I wanted to sort of write out the directions, I would maybe say um, one unit forward, two units left, and then three units up. And that's another way of describing sort of the path of this point. Let's plot one more point. Let's plot a special point. How about the point... Um, let's see, zero, five, zero. And I picked that point because it ends up in a kind of neat spot. Zero in the x direction, five in the positive y direction, that ends up there, so that's right here, and then zero in the positive z direction. So this point that has coordinates zero, five, zero is actually landed on the y-axis. It is some sort of y-intercept. So don't forget that we can move zero spaces in a certain direction. Let's do something a little more interesting. Let's graph this thing, 3x plus y plus 2z equals 6. Well, before, I was just graphing, plotting points, but now we have variables x, y, and z. What did it look like when you just had two variables, x and y? Well, that was a line, right? Because x was allowed to vary, um, and as x varied, y, y varied with x. But now we have three things varying. So think about what that means. We have a line that's now allowed to move along the z-axis. It's allowed to move in a direction. So if you take a line and you move it back and forth in some direction, you're going to get a plane. And that's exactly what this is right here. This is a plane. And a plane, you know, has um, no thickness. And it extends infinitely far in all directions. So how are we supposed to draw something? in all directions. How are we supposed to draw something that extends infinitely far in all directions? We are first going to find, well think about how, just to relate it to how you might graph a line, one uh, thing that was important in a line were the x and the y intercepts. With a plane we can find the x, y, and the z intercepts. So that's really the first thing we're going to do here to try to graph this line. So what do we do to find intercepts? That's where the graph of this plane will hit each axis. If I'm looking for the x-intercept, I would want to set y and z equal to 0. So if you imagine doing that, we get 3x plus 0 for y plus 2 times 0 equals 6. If you solve that, you get x equals 2. That's the x-intercept. So let's list our intercepts down here. The x-intercept at an x-coordinate of 2, and since it's an intercept, our y and z coordinates are going to be 0. I bet you can find the other two intercepts without actually writing out the equation. If we make x and z equal to 0, we just get y equals 6 from our original equation of the plane. If we set x and y equal to 0, we get 2z equals 6, so z equals 3. These are our three intercepts. So I want to plot them on, you know, the correct way. So again, let's have this be positive x, this is positive y, and this is positive z axes. 2, 0, 0, 
would be right here on the x-axis. 0, 6, 0 would be here on the y-axis. 0, 0, 3, 1, 2, 3 would be here on the z-axis. Can you sort of envision the plane that passes through those, through those three points? What's helpful to draw are things called the traces. Traces are lines that connect two out of the three intercepts. So there's one of the traces. There's another trace. And here's another trace, the last one. There will be three traces for each plane. It looks like a triangle, but remember, the plane is really passing through those three points. And when you connect the three traces, it looks triangular, but remember, the plane is really extending far in all directions. So if I shaded in the whole plane, well, then just the whole screen would be shaded in, because again, remember, we're trying to represent three dimensions on something two-dimensional. So let me just shade the inside of all those traces. And that might kind of help visualize where that plane is. It's kind of leaning up against the axes. Um, and of course, it's extending in all directions, but this is hopefully just helping you visualize that. The last thing we want to do is get the equations of each trace. So the equation, each trace is just a line, so we can do that. Now what's nice is we can look at which axes the trace cross. So let's look at this trace first, the one that I'm highlighting in green right now. This one passed through the x-axis and the y-axis, but not the z-axis. So the equation for that trace is the equation for the plane without paying attention to the z, and essentially we're setting z equal to zero. It, it, the line lay flat in the z equals zero plane, essentially. So the equation for this trace would be 3x plus y equals 6. We set z equal to zero because it didn't have to do with the z intercept. Let's look at this trace right here. It passed through the x-axis and through the z-axis, but not the y-axis. So let's make y equal to zero. 3x plus 2z equals 6. That's the equation for that trace. The very last trace passed through the y-axis and the z-axis, but not the x-axis. So let's make x equal to 0. y plus 2z equals 6. Those three green equations are the equations of the three traces. And we can just think about, oh, I guess I didn't really draw arrows like I did before, so I can do that. Um, we just want to think about setting one of the variables equal to zero because it wasn't dependent on that variable to get the equation of the line. So don't get confused now between plotting points and planes. Just like you wouldn't get confused about plotting a point and graphing a line in two dimensions, a point is just a single point in space. It's a single place, but we do trace out the path so we can see how we got there. A plane is really representing infinitely many points together, and that collection we, we show by drawing the three traces and shading the interior. So you want to find the intercepts first. Good luck with graphing!